Hi guys and welcome back. Today I'm working on the bookmark design. I love working in this kind of dimension where it's skinny and really tall. I don't know, I just I think it facilitates a certain kind of design choice that, that I really like where I can focus on creating characters that feel a little bit more almost like their art within art or like a mural or a little bit more iconic. I can incorporate different kind of design elements. Kind of like this one where I have these two kind of border elements at the top and bottom of the piece. I don't know, I just, I really do enjoy working in really narrow kind of dimensions like this. But let's just go ahead and get started with this piece. So at the very beginning you saw a clip that is probably gone now because it was really quick, but I was just showing the way that I transfer either my line work or a light tracing of the sketch so that I can do line work without the light box. But the light box is integral for the way that I work with my watercolor paper that allows me to get a really clean transfer over and then I don't have to erase anything off of watercolor paper, which is definitely something you want to avoid. Watercolor paper is pretty delicate as far as a rubbing kind of action on it, but you can barely see anything when I am doing that kind of a transfer or inking method. So I figure I'd usually cut that part out, but that is what I actually did this time. I went ahead and inked right with the light box. Sometimes I transfer it and then ink it, but that is what I did this time. I also did a mixture of two different ink colors for this. I went in with the black for the elements that I knew would be really dark. And then I went in with this actually kind of bright red for, for other elements like his skin and certain areas like the scarf and things that I knew would be a much lighter value. And I tried to think about the way and placement of where I was putting each color a little bit more this time because in the past when I've used multiple colors, which I usually end up doing, is, is I, I don't really think about how to outline darker areas next to lighter areas because oftentimes I will outline the light area and then there's a certain shared line or shared shape next to it and then I don't always make sure that that is lined in the darker color. So I'm trying to make sure that even if it's a line that wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily automatically think to make dark, like the line around the outside of the ear. I would think that that would be the color that the rest of his face is. But really, since it is the last line between his skin and his hair, I needed to make sure that it was a dark value. That way it wouldn't get lost as I painted his hair. That is something that I, I usually end up running into in the past is I, I'll paint in something really dark, but since it doesn't have that darker line on one side of it, that can get eaten away a little bit, which is fine because I usually end up adding that line work anyways, but, but it's always nicer to think about it in advance and put it into play right at the very beginning. So the biggest thing that I could have done better with this piece, which I know it always ends up coming up, is not planning the values or the colors before I started. <laughs> I, I don't know. I think it's going to take me a little longer. I, I think it's going to take me one really bad mistake before it really gets nailed into my head to never do that again. But, but sometimes I slip up when I do these little pieces like this that seem relatively simple. I just don't even think about it. But this one, really the biggest obstacle that hit me from, from that kind of attack plan, as in not having an attack plan for the colors, was the background. So I knew from the beginning basically the color layout that I wanted for the figure. I wanted his coat to be a really dark red and then everything else was based around it, but I hadn't figured out what I wanted for the background. And uh, I just, when it came time to paint it, I just picked one that I thought would look pretty good, but it was like a two second decision and then I went for it. And then from that point on, I was struggling with making it look right because it just felt off from the very beginning once I put that blue down and yeah I mean it ends up in an okay place but I just put so much thought and frustration honestly into that one particular thing trying to figure out how to fix it that if I could have just planned that out from the beginning I could have put all that extra thought and attention into other things and made it better but but anyways this will just go on another list that eventually will hopefully nail it into my brain that I need to plan things out. I know some artists are just really good at just not, or at least it looks like they don't, but I don't think I'll ever be that way. And I'm okay with that. I definitely know that the way that I work and the way that I approach pretty much anything in art, I want to know and I need to know exactly how am I going to execute it 
what colors am I going to choose? What type of line work am I going to use to achieve that look? So I am definitely someone who needs to have it figured out because when I just jump in and, and play with it by ear, it usually ends up something that's a little bit less satisfactory for me. So I think really the key is just learning yourself and learning your own approaches and your own weaknesses and where those lie. And for me, making things up as I'm going tends to be a weakness of mine. <laughs> so, so yeah, I, I, I think that hopefully one day I will make sure that even for the simple things like this, I take a second to, to plan it out a little bit better. I know that I'll be a lot happier with overall, all of my work. And I do know that, that the more that I do that, the better I am at doing color comps, the better I am at choosing colors easily and quickly all the time. So when it comes time to do another color comp, if I've done a bunch in a row and I'm really good at making sure that I do color comps when I do the next one, it usually comes together a little bit better, usually, not always. But if I get a little bit lax with that, I find that I'm less thoughtful about my color choices overall for the last while because I'm not sitting there and analyzing which ones exactly go where. I'm kind of picking and choosing as I'm going. I, I tend to struggle a little bit more when it comes time to actually plan it out and actually figure out which ones are going to have the impact that I want. So so yeah, I guess it's just kind of a practice makes perfect thing for me. The more that I practice picking out the colors beforehand and doing color comps, the better they usually end up being, which is basically something that can be applied to anything in art. So one thing that I did kind of rediscover with this piece is how much I love using the Micron Red with certain paint colors. So this color is very bright. If you haven't witnessed it, it's basically like a grading pen red. It's really, really saturated. And it seems like it's just, there's no way that it would really mesh into a piece of artwork, especially as line work. But I've done some experiments with it in the past and I've used it in some pieces. And I actually really love that line work color with certain paint colors with reds, light, light red. So I guess pink and oranges and yellows where they're this really soft pastel color with that bright red line work. I think that it just looks really fresh and sharp and clean in a way. And I love that look. I love how it comes together and how certain colors that are contained within that line work just makes that red feel like it belongs with that piece. So this is, this is something that I just, I love being able to find ways to actually use that pen in pieces. I don't know what it is. It just, it makes me happy to look at when I can combine those things together. So I think that those those elements are probably my favorite part of this piece, the way that the colors ended up coming together. And I actually really love how it ends up looking with that red coat. I I don't think I've ever really intentionally thought about putting red and pink together before. I like to put a lot of varying values of certain colors together. So I've done that before in the past with like every other color having green and then light green or a darker blue and a light blue. And I love how that looks, but I've always avoided red and pink, maybe because in, in the way that we think about pink, for some reason, it seems like a different color. I don't know. But <laughs> at least this kind of helped me realize that that is a bit of an error in, in my thinking that's been there for a long time is that I've been considering and thinking about these different values in a kind of a strange way, not on purpose, but, but anyways, I think that this will help me open up some some more color combinations and ways of approaching color. It's surprising sometimes to me how, how sometimes I'll hit something and realize that I've been treating color in a very specific way for a long time. And it wasn't really something that I was putting a lot of thought into. It was just more like this, the subconscious way of approaching it. And then when I see it and I realize that I've been doing it that way, it's like it opens up this whole new section of of ways to approach color when, when we have a limited color already. We, I mean, we have limited choices for colors. So, so to be able to get to a point where you realize new combinations of colors that you can use that you have written off a little bit, it feels really exciting and new and fresh. And for the gold paint, I went with my favorite gold paints, which is fine tech gold and silver palette, I believe it's called. I'll have a link down in the description with all of the other tools that I used to create this painting, but I love that paint. I love how opaque you can get it, or if you want it to be this really 
thin glaze of shimmering gold or silver, then it works both ways. You just mix it the way you want it. But I did go with a really opaque application for this. I wanted it to have a lot of impact and, and shine to it. But that is it for today. If you would like to see the sketch part of this, I do have that video posted exclusively over on my Patreon. There's a link down in the description that'll take you over there. And I do have the original painting available at my shop. And again, there is a link right down in the description that'll take you over there as well. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will be back next Wednesday with another video.